Hello and welcome to God's Stories. I'm just back from a wonderful holiday in South Africa and was wonderful to reconnect with family and friends. I would like to share with you a story from one of my friends, um, a story which sort of reminds you unfortunately of the level of crime and violence that still exists, but also reminds us of what a wonderful God we have. So he was driving in his car a bit later at night into the city centre which isn't the best part of town and he parked his car and just as he got out of the car there were two men by either side immediately. They grabbed hold of him and he just immediately knew this was serious and he had to cooperate. So they ushered him across the road into a block of flats. I think the lift wasn't working and they, they forced him to go up the stairs. He says he's not sure if it was on the 10th or 11th floor but it was quite high up. They came inside a flat and they took him into the bedroom. When he got here, he, they ordered him to undress and he had to put all his possessions and his clothes to the side and they made him lie naked on the bed. A little while later, another group of people came in and this was a mixture of um, males and females and they were just going through all his possessions. They took his mobile phone, his wristwatch, and um, also opened his wallet. And he did have quite a lot of cash with him at the time. So they took all the cash and took all his cards. They then said to him that he had to cooperate and give them all the pin codes to the cards, or otherwise they wouldn't um, hesitate to kill him. So he did that. And then um, not long after that, this second group of people left and he was just left with the two original men that captured him and they were guarding the door. He was just left there to lie naked. And um, I, it, it, I find it horrifying to, do, to think what this must have done to him just to lie there and to have no idea what's happening next. He says to me that was the longest time ever and it just felt like eternity. Um, but he, he kept his cool and he was just lying there um, he's a prayerful man, he's a Christian and I am I'm sure he was praying all the time. He then said what made him feel a little bit more anxious is the two men were now st talking in their native language and he was wondering if they were contemplating how to kill him or how to get rid of his body or what they were going to do with him. And it obviously would just raise a certain sense of unsettledness in him. And they kept on saying to him, oh they will be back they will be back and he almost got the impression they were getting impatient that these people were not coming back when they again said to him they will be back he just felt a certain anger and courage probably just to sit up and say no I don't believe you they are not coming back and then he challenged them and said is it not better for you just to shoot me now and then you can just get on with your life at saying this, the one uh, one of the men was so shocked and surprised, he looked round at him and he said, No, 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 we don't plan to shoot you, we won't shoot you, and you must remember, Jesus loves you. That must have been quite a strange thing for him to hear. And I'm not really sure how that left him, but not too long after this, the the people did come back. They allowed him to get dressed gave him his car keys back but obviously had robbed him from quite a lot of his possessions especially all his all his um, money that he had so when I asked him well what was going through your mind at this stage um, he said he just he did have a, a sense of a peace over him but he, he was also getting quite agitated for how long a time this took um, but it was uh, probably a culmination of things that made him think this but when I asked him was there any scripture you thought about he said well John 3 16 did come in his mind and that's such a lovely verse that, that, that says to us that well God so loved the world that he sent his only son so that those that believe will not perish but have eternal life <clears throat> and as he thought that he obviously knew that he in himself was saved by Christ because he has made that commitment but he was also thinking that Christ also died for these two men that are with me in the room and I was reflecting on how beautiful that is 
that if we in a situation of turmoil can actually look at our perpetrators and think Jesus also died for you it's almost like sending an arrow prayer to that person um, to the Lord for that person and what a better place the world would be if we are also interceding for our enemies and I think that's that's the main thing that I thought was so stunning about this story to be thinking not just of yourself but of your enemies and also when I asked him then afterwards, was there anything that you were left with? And he said, I just really feel fearless about death now. And I thought that's so true because as a Christian, you are really safe with Jesus in life or death. And knowing that Christ died on that cross, it really does take the sting out of death. Goodbye.